Alleluia, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad, and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. very good morning and it's a real pleasure to be with you all this morning as part of this service. I have one or two notices to share with you this morning and hence why I'm appearing in this service. It is with Christian joy and with human sadness that I have to announce the death of Elsie Tyler. Elsie sadly died on Thursday of this past week uh, very close to her 99th birthday. Can I invite you to hold in your prayers Keith and Val Tyler and all of Keith's family as they mourn the loss of a beloved grandmother and mother. Elsie has lived her whole life in the parish of St Mary of Charity, a lifelong member of the parish church. So it is in Christian joy that we celebrate her resurrection in Christ, but we hold also her family in our prayers. And turning to the parish of St Catharines, uh, yesterday, Saturday, I was speaking to the family of Christine or Chris Wolfe. Chris was a member of St Catharines congregation, but due to ill health over the past few years, had not attended. Chris had been very much involved in the theatre um, and arts scene in Faversham, so we remember Chris's family, um, particularly her two sons, um, and we hold all that, that family in our prayers as we remember Chris at St Catharines. I hope all of you are staying safe and doing the very best you can to maintain social distancing and looking after your own and the community's well-being. With this in mind, we have had a review of our services and whether we continue to keep our churches closed. The church wardens met last week and we unanimously decided that for the coming month of February, our churches will remain closed. Our real deep desire is, of course, to be able to celebrate the festival of Easter, and that is our hope. Um, but again, we will take um, advice as we move forward, and we will be writing to our bishop asking for permission to continue to keep our churches closed in February. 
can I remind everybody that if there is a pastoral emergency and you do need to go into church just to say, to, not just, but to say prayers for a loved one or for any other special purpose, please, please do contact me and I can make the, the church available for private prayer um, in, in pastoral emergencies. Please, each and every one of you, stay well with love and blessings. Into all you're going through at the moment, the joys and the sorrows, grace, mercy and peace be with you in the name of Jesus, our only constant source of hope. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts before our Lord who knows us intimately. As we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Shall we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. God, the Father of mercies, has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, not counting our trespasses against us, but sending his Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love among us. By the ministry of reconciliation entrusted by Christ to his Church, receive his pardon and peace, to stand before him in his strength alone, this day, and evermore. Amen. Let's say the Gloria in Excelsis together, praising God for who he is and all he does. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And this is the collect for today, the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, please renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weaknesses, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, Ellie. Hi. So what have we been learning about today? We've been learning about Jesus' first miracle, mm. and that was turning water. Okay into wine. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and show everyone again. Jesus turned water 
into wine. That's brilliant. Should we show everybody how we did it? Yay! So Ellie, what do we need for this craft? So for this craft we need some colourful pens or pencils, some sellotape, some scissors and three pieces of card, mm -hmm. each smaller than the other. Okay. And what do we do to start then? So to start with, you get the medium piece of card mm -hmm. and you draw a kind of vase shape on it. So you draw a, a water jar shape. Mm -hmm. And then you decorate that how you like. Yeah. So you've got your water jar shape and what are you putting on there, Ellie? How are you decorating and yours? And I'm decorating mine by doing a grape to show that it's wine hmm. because wine comes from grape. Okay. And I might draw the vines that the grapes okay. coming from. And what's that? That so you've drawn the water jar, and what's that at the bottom that you've drawn the square? And the at the bottom, I did a little tag because that's what you need to use for um, when you fold it all together. Yeah. Okay. So then you colour that in, decorate mm -hmm. it how you like, and then we move on to the next stage. Yep. So that looks great, Ellie. So you've coloured that jar in. Mm -hmm. And what else have you done? So we've cut it out and next you need to get your smaller piece of card, mm -hmm. lay down your vase yeah. and then trace just around the bottom bit. So just around the, the body of it. Mm -hmm. Not any of these bits are okay, like that. So you... And include the tab. Okay. So then you and make when, it into... Lovely. When like you cut it out, make that. sure you don't cut the tab off, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you colour in all of it blue. So this is the jar with water in. Mm -hmm. So now you've finished colouring it in blue, what's mm -hmm. the next step? So the next step is to get your biggest piece of paper and draw round your blue one, mm -hmm. but don't add the tab. Okay. So, this one is going to be your wine one. Okay. And we don't need to cut this one out, do we? No. Nope. So you're going to colour that one in? Yep. So we need... A nice pinkishy red. Okay. So you trace around them, don't you, to make mm -hmm. sure that they're all the same size. That's right, and that the uh, the blue one covers up the red one, mm -hmm. so you can't see it at first. So once that jar's all coloured in, what do you do? So next, you get all of the ones that you have done mm -hmm. and line them up brilliant to each other so if i was you i would first put this one on then top. put it there and then and then you get your sellotape oh and take it down okay well <laughs> Like that. that, and then you get a pen or pencil, mm -hmm. and then write Jesus mm -hmm. first mirror. Mm. Oh, Jesus' first miracle. Brilliant. Turn it round. Let's and see. And then, so, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Quick repair. Repair. So there we have it. Let's have a look, Ellie. So, he, 
we yeah. have some plain water here then it turns into wine so jesus turned the water into wine thank you ellie that's brilliant bye thanks liz and ellie and now let's hear our readings the reading is from genesis chapter 14 verses 17 to 20. After Abram's return from the defeat of Kedalorama and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High maker of heaven and earth and blessed be god most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and abraham gave him one tenth of everything this is the word of the lord thanks be to god of Revelation chapter 19 verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, 
Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. May this be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The wedding at Cana in Galilee is a reading that we've hear, heard so many times. And yet John's telling of it points to some significant truths. He begins by saying, on the third day, a wedding 
in Cana of Galilee took place. Listen to the words again. On the third day, knowing that Jesus himself rose on the third day, some think about the nature of Jesus' life and death is being revealed in John's telling. For Jews, a wedding and the te testimony that Jesus gives is about the coming of God's kingdom. That's what the um, motif of a wedding means within the gospel story. The coming of a new kingdom. We witness in a wedding, of course, um, when we attend them, the new beginning of a bride and a groom um, and a new family. But in John's telling of the wedding at Cana, the wedding is there to signify the coming of God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. Again, we have more visual imagery. The wine runs out. How would we feel if we'd gone to a special party and the wine had run out? There would be a sense of being shortchanged at a celebration. The celebration couldn't be as full as it should be because there was insufficient um, drink um, to celebrate what we were there to celebrate. And here we join the people at the wedding and the wine runs out. So Jesus asks for some water jars or some, um, some, some vessels that are large enough to hold a large volume of water. That's fairly straightforward. But what type of vessels is John telling us that they are? These are water vessels used for the Jewish rite of purification. It is the Jewish rite of purification that we understand our own Christian baptism. One part of the story moves on to the next. For the Jewish rite of purification is only for the Jews. The baptism of Christ is for everyone. And then, of course, taking us back again to that opening words on the third day. We know that baptism is only the first step in our journey of faith. It is our resurrection into eternal life through Christ that offers us the coming of a new kingdom. Here interwoven in the very first public miracle that Jesus performs, the beginning of his ministry, his public ministry, we see all these elements, all these scenes being played out about who Jesus is and about what he brings. The good news of Jesus is that, yes, we are purified through baptism that we receive new life and the coming of the kingdom for the bride is Christ. And then we have the human element. We have Mary, his mother, sitting there next to him. She must want him to be the Messiah that is spoken of. She's a proud Jewish mother. But I wonder if this is how she expected the Messiah to behave. Producing more wine at a wedding. But listen to what she says. And her words are not just for the servants there, but for each one of us who listen today. Her words are clear. Do whatever he tells you to do. Mary is speaking to us as his followers, the followers of her son, Jesus Christ. Have faith in him. Do as he tells you to do. Mary, the same Mary who will stand at the foot of the cross, weeping at the death of her son, is the Mary who believes from the very beginning. The Mary who believes when the angel announces who Jesus is. The Mary who witnesses Jesus and his first miracle, proclaiming the coming of God's kingdom. 
we share today in the joy, the joy of the coming of Jesus Christ. Very soon we will be moving into the period of Lent as we, we, we with Christ turn our faces towards Jerusalem. But today we're at the beginning of Jesus's ministry. And as we reflect upon our own ministry, the calling of each one of us and our churches. Our calling is to bring the good news in the abundance that Christ provided at that wedding. The joy that must have happened in that wedding when the wine flowed. Clearly the spirit was at work through Jesus. And there was so much joy at being a follower of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we may find being a Christian a bit of a slog. That's more to do with us than Christ. Maybe we just need to listen to the story of the wedding at Cana all over again. Jesus brings the good news of the kingdom. He brings it in a very human way, in the midst of a wedding, in the midst of a celebration, and his first miracle in those Jewish jars of purification is to bring wine in abundance. And the human element. His mother speaks to us loudly across the ages. She turns, looking at her, at her son, and says to each one of us, do as he says. We see Christ standing before all those people at the wedding, bringing love, bringing hope, bringing transformation, transformation to their lives and our lives. May we have hope as Mary did in Christ. May we have faith in Christ, as those who have seen the wine transformed by the miracle must have done as well. And may we share as abundantly as Christ shared the wine, the good news of the kingdom in the place where we live and in the community where we live. Peace be upon you, upon your homes, upon your lives and may the Holy Spirit working through Christ who created abundantly the wine at the wedding create abundantly hope and love in your hearts and your homes this day and forevermore Amen Oh, you know.
me well and you know what I can give. Oh, fill me again and we'll live. Let's affirm our faith in our wonderful God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you call to us, but sometimes when we are distant, we hear that call as a murmur and do not respond. We may wander around in a wilderness, we may grow accustomed to the darkness, yet the inner light of your presence remains in the midst of our being, and through the gift of prayer, the gift that we cannot forget for long, we return in contrition to our need for your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the life on earth of your beloved Son, Christ Jesus, who has shown us the fullest potential of our nature in accordance with your will, as we face the puzzles and demands of our daily lives. Help us in our quest to follow his bright example of good fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Church at Canterbury and give thanks for its commitment over 1,500 years to serve the, both those intent on pilgrimage and those struggling haplessly through many troubles. We give thanks for the work of Archbishop Justin, the regular communications during these difficult times from Bishop Rose, and for Archdeacon Stephen, handling of late additional duties following the retirement of Julian Hills. Lord, we give thanks for the four churches of our benefice. We pray for our clergy and for our lay leaders as we navigate these strange and disconcerting times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the beauty of this world of your creation and for the faithful human response that through art and architecture, music and literature has best reflected it. We pray for the mainspring of our being to be free of vain distraction and given over to an appreciation of work undertaken with no thought of personal gain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your love and authority to enlighten where diverse human devilries wage war and impose oppression at will. We pray for the people of Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan, 
Syria. And we pray for an end to violence in Turkey, Somalia and Mexico. We wince when we hear of suffering, for we see it borne by the innocent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, at a time when so very many families are dealing with illness and death, we pray into our need for the restoration of good health. We know that our earthly days are not evenly distributed, that well-being is variable, that you wish us to realise the nature of eternity lying beyond these finite things, but within the passing moment we cannot help but care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the suppression of the coronavirus as it sweeps the world, particularly disabling our nation. We give thanks for our NHS and pray its resources will ultimately match the huge strain upon it. Through Christ Jesus, we know of our best nature as being through a consideration for others above regard for personal requirements. We pray for the widest recognition of this, your true intent for our conscience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. However we might be struggling, because we're not with those who we want to be with, remember... We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we were baptised into one body. So let's keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We are bound by the love of Christ. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. As we meet around the Lord's table, the Lord is here and he is where you are. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and he washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup and gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. So, therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Jesus broken for you because he loves you so much. The blood of Jesus shed for you out of his constant love for you. Oh,
Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you said, let there be light. Please help us join in with you, transforming the world's darkness into holy places shining bright. Loving God, you said, love one another. Please help us join with you, transforming the world's hate and conflict into love for neighbour, sister and brother. Living God, you changed water into finest wine. Please help us join in with you, transforming the world's brokenness into beauty, reflecting the light that you shine. And now, friends, into all that you're going through, the joys and the sorrows, the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is with you and remains with you today, tomorrow and always. Amen. So now let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. In the name of Christ. Amen.